good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our very happy Easter to you. It's lovely to welcome you to church this morning. You can see I've got the screens behind me, which means we've got uh, a very special treat this morning with our puppet. Yay. <laughs> oh, good. Got a little bit of a cheer. We're, we're slightly depleted because COVID has struck a number of our, our congregation, unfortunately, including one of our puppeteers, Andrew Anon. Um, so, uh, but the Lord is good and uh, we'll be able to celebrate the wonders of the resurrection this morning. So we're going to start with our first hymn, which is the Day of Resurrection. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Alleluia. 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 Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, we stand here on Easter Sunday celebrate, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus only because we have first stood at the foot of the cross and seen him killed for our sins. And our puppets this morning are going to remind us of this really important story. So do please be seated. Give us a moment or two because uh, Naomi and I will need to get into position for it.
Oh, didn't they do well? We're, we're, missing a, we're missing a puppeteer and, uh, and whatnot, but uh, and what a wonderful story to be able to tell. It's a very, very moving one indeed. Oh. I think one of the things we need to do as we reflect on that story, we reflect on the cross, is that we need to remember why Jesus went to that cross. He went there because of us, because of our sin. And so let's just spend a moment of quiet, just bringing those sins to God, and uh, then we're going to confess them all together.
So we say together, Heavenly Father, the sacrifice of your Son moves us deeply. We are sorry for all the wrong things we have done, said and thought, sins for which Jesus took the punishment. Please forgive us. Help us to remember that his death was for us, and because he lives, we have new life too. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are forgiven. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and Ooh. keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's stand and sing the Gloria together. I'll do sit back down again. I wonder how good your memories are this morning. My memory is pretty rubbish. I already forgot my robes and forgot to take any Easter eggs to Penmark this morning. So that's my failure with memory. I wonder what your memory is like. Now, I'm going to show a picture up on the screen. It's actually four pictures. Right? So I want you to look very closely at the pictures. And I'm going to invite two people who you think they might be particularly good with their memory to come to the front and you're going to be the ones um, who are going to have a little memory test. So I'll let you come to the front earlier so you can look at the picture closer up. So who would like to pit their memory against somebody else this morning? Or I shall pick two people. So... Uh, <laughs> David? David and Dylan? Oh, David and Dylan. Okay, so you can come to the front so you can see the picture a bit more closely to start with. So you need to be looking at the details on the picture. And the rest of you can be looking as well. Um, you're not allowed to help them. I'm going to take it off the screen when I start asking the questions. Oh. But uh, you can play along with them. So... Look at the colours, look at the shapes, look at what else is going on in the pictures. I particularly like the one of the Roman soldier up there. If you can't read it, he's saying, no, no, not on my shift. <laughs> <coughs> OK, 
okay, ha, I don't, have you fed it all into your brains, guys? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> Dylan's like, oh, not sure. <laughs> right, I'll give you another 10 seconds. Cram those details into your mind. <laughs> okay, so Naomi, if you can take it off. Right, okay, guys. Here's right, we'll go, we'll go with David first because you're looking confident there, David, all right? <laughs> so here's your first one. How many of the women have scarves on their head? Oh. In the first picture, how many of the women have got scarves on their head? I'm going to go on with two. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was one. Oh. Oh. Double vision, David. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dylan. How many f in that first picture? How many flowers were on the hillside? Oh, oh so close. It's five. Oh. Oh. David, what has happened to the jar of spices belonging to the lady in the orange headscarf? <laughs> I think it's spilled. You're right. Hey. We'll, have to, we'll, have to, we'll have to keep a score, right? So we've, well, we both start with a D. D A and D I. Okay. Right, Dylan, you've got something to catch up with now. What colour is the jar of spice in the hands of the lady in the blue dress? Oh, you're so close. You're like so close. You're like, it was sort of a pinky purple. Oh. Okay, David, how many angels are there? That first picture. I just remember the whole time here. You might just have given away the next answer to Dylan. Uh, how many? Oh, there's two. But I hope you're listening to David Dillon because you should get this one. How many angels are clean shaven? So without a beard? One. <laughs> it is one. It is one. <laughs> All right, David, we're going to move to the Roman soldier now. What colour is his tunic? Oh, his tunic's the bit underneath, oh, yeah. and that's green. <laughs> what animal, Dylan, is standing by the Roman soldier? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stage whispers. <laughs> it is a squirrel. <laughs> David, what weapons is the Roman carrying? <coughs> there are two, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with a spear. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I want to say a dagger. I think he's probably more technically a sword. <sighs> oh. oh. Well, that's a long dagger, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you half. Okay, half, half. Now, this is a hard one now, Dylan, for you. How many small stones are by the Romans' feet? Oh, it was just two. <laughs> Right, move into the next one with the grave. <coughs> what colour is Peter's hat? Oh, it was blue. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, the grave cloths, what design are they folded in? In the picture? What, yeah, but how are they, how's the cloth folded? What does it look like? Was it, was it? Straight, was it crisscross? Oh, it was crisscross. <laughs> David, has Peter stepped into the tomb? And if so, how many feet has he got in it? Okay. Six. Don't listen to the crowd, they're going to mislead you. <laughs> I say he's two feet in. Oh, he's just got one foot in. Okay, Dylan, what colour is the hat of the disciple in the bottom right-hand corner? 
um, in the last picture. He is also in the picture before as well. It's not blue, it's green and yellow. David, that last picture. How many bars on the door? Two. <laughs> Dylan, what colour clothes is Jesus wearing? And oh, white and blue. I'll give you half. <laughs> David, last question now for you. How many disciples are with Jesus? There are five figures because one of them's Jesus. It's four. Oh. <laughs> and last question for you, Dylan. What colour beard does the man in the blue headdress have? So not the blue hat, the blue headdress. Uh, it might have been black once upon a time, but now it's grey. Oh. Flick up your picture back again, um, <coughs> Naomi. There you go. So you can see. I think it's a squirrel. I would have taken anything that was sort of small in there. But well done. But the point was, it's actually quite difficult to remember, isn't it? Lots of details on there. And it was quite difficult to remember. Often we forget what we see and what we hear. And that's going to be a bit of our theme for today. On the way out, guys, you can have an extra Easter egg for your efforts. But I'll tell you, the, the, the winner was Dylan. Because Dylan got three and a half and David got two and a half. So there we go. Ooh, it's very close. But let's hear the account properly. Now, we're thinking about memory. When Luke wrote his gospel... He went round and he did the research and he checked it all out so we can be sure that what we read here is what happens on that Easter morning. So we're going to read Luke chapter 24 and it's verses 1 to 12. So let's stand as we listen to this really important reading this morning. <clears throat> so it's Luke chapter 24, it's page 1061. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the tomb rolled, the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, loving Father, thank you so much for this Easter day. Thank you for this message recorded for us so faithfully by Luke. And we pray now that you would teach us from your word, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll do sit down, but don't close your Bibles. You need to pick your Bible Back up again, if you haven't got one exactly where you are, then have a hunt around and there will be some Bibles in the back of some of the seats. Um, because we've, we've remembered the story, our puppets told us what happened, we've seen the pictures up there, but let's really dig into what was going on on that first Easter morning. Now we've got these characters, we've got our women, 
we've got Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joanna and some other women that aren't named in the account. Well, let's see what they've been doing over the last three days. So we need to look back. We need to look back into the chapter before. So flick your eyes onto the page before and let's see what they've been up to. We can see that Jesus was crucified. And if we look down to verse 49 of chapter 23, uh, what were the women doing while Jesus was crucified? Who can say? Who can tell me? What did the women do? They stood at a distance watching. So the women are there at the crucifixion. They're at a distance, but they're there. They've not left Jesus' side, watching, taking it all in. Then Joseph of Arimathea comes and he takes the body down and lays Jesus' dead body into the tomb. And um, where are the women now? Look at verse 55. They've gone to the tomb. Yeah, they followed and they're watching as Jesus' dead body is put in the tomb. They know exactly where he is. You don't remember, you know, you don't forget where the body of your loved one has been buried. They've watched, they've taken it in. And then what do they do in verse 56? They went home to prepare spices. They couldn't do anything at the time because it was the time of the Sabbath. In fact, we're, we're told that the... Um, they, they went to check on the others that were crucified with Jesus to check that they were dead so they could be dealt with before the Sabbath, if necessary, breaking the legs. But Jesus had already died by that point. It's very nearly the Sabbath. So the women can't do anything. They've got to go home and they've got to sit there and wait out a whole day's Sabbath. Now that must have been really, really tough. Not being able to do this very last important thing for Jesus. But then in verse 1 of chapter 24, what do we find them doing on the first day of the week? They've got their spices and they're on their way to go and see Jesus. And it's very early. They would have got up. Maybe they didn't even sleep the night before. They'd have got up the crack of dawn as soon as the Sabbath was over to take those spices to Jesus. Now, I wonder... I wonder how you think they might have been feeling. How do we think these women are feeling at this moment in time? Upset. Upset. Oh, we'll put that one up down. Upset. Heartbroken. Devastated. There we are. We'll have those three words. I'm going to put those words up here for us to look at. I reckon they were feeling those things and loads more. Maybe they were also feeling hopeless. Remember, Jesus, they believe Jesus is the Messiah. They'd seen Jesus do all of these amazing things. They'd seen him heal people in their droves. They'd even seen him bring back Lazarus from the dead. They'd seen the miracles of Jesus. And yet, there he was dead in the tomb and all that they can do is they can go and they can anoint this corpse but then something amazing happens they turn up at the tomb and they get there and what's already happened the stone, the stone has been rolled away but that doesn't immediately make everything all right because what do they do they went in to see, and what do they see? Nobody. Yeah, nobody. Where, where's Jesus' body gone? They've gone to make things right, and he isn't there. But then, who appears before them? Go on, Lydia. Angels. Two angels appear before the women. Now, they're terrified. Always in the Bible, when angels appear, people are terrified. Think about the shepherds when the announcement of Jesus' birth is made, terrified. Here the women are terrified as well because the angels contain the power 
and the glory of God, don't they? But these angels have got a wonderful message. What's the message of these angels? He is risen, yeah. He is not here. He is risen. I'm going to put these words here. He is not here. He has risen. And that changes absolutely everything. Jesus is alive. So I wonder, I wonder how it might have changed those words. What words might we have now instead? Relieved. Relieved. Joyful. Elated. And I think our, uh, our puppet, they looked very excited to see Jesus, didn't they? They had a lovely big hug off him. That was uh, Lydia was one of our, our women, and Karina, Mum, were our, our women visiting the tomb in the puppet. So there we are, joyful, elated, relieved. Jesus' resurrection changed everything. But there's something else I want us to see here. Because that's a very important message all by itself. But actually, you know, the women shouldn't have been upset, heartbroken, devastated, hopeless. They shouldn't have been. Why shouldn't they have been all those things? Because they've been told. Yeah, they've been told by Jesus what was going to happen. If you look down to verse 6, the angels say, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Jesus had told them, and this is what he told them, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And you know, Jesus didn't just tell them once. In Mark's Gospel, where record, it's recorded that he tells them three times. And I wonder how many more times he must have told them that haven't been recorded in the scriptures for us. Jesus had told them, and they'd forgotten. Now, if the women had remembered, how might that first Easter morning have been different? What do you think would have been different? Let's have some guesses. They'd have gone there rejoicing, can't we? They'd have known where he was, yeah. How else might it have played out differently if they'd have just remembered? I can think that they might have been there. I think they would have risked breaking the Sabbath, perhaps. I think they might have been there watching the stone roll away. Because, you know, why did the stone you know, roll, roll away. It wasn't so Jesus could get out because he could walk through closed doors after the resurrection. It was so they could see him. They could have seen the stone rolling away. They could have been there with a cup of tea for Jesus. He's been in the tomb for three days. They could have, they could have been recording it on TikTok. Who knows? <laughs> but on a very serious note, think about how much misery they could have avoided if they had only remembered the words of Jesus. But they missed it. They missed that joy and that excitement because they didn't remember. And instead, well, they did the best they could, didn't they? They were good people. They did the best they could. But the best they could was to go and prepare to pretty up a corpse. And if we forget the words of Jesus, we too end up confused, hopeless, sad. We try our best, but without him, our best is nothing more than dressing up a corpse. Because Jesus is the one who gives life. The Holy Spirit breathes life into God's people. Life now and life in eternity. True life is only found in Jesus. And remembering his words transforms us and the whole way that we view and approach life. Well, what about the men? Did the men do any better? Let's see, did the men do any better? 
Well, let's flip back into chapter 23. Uh, wh wh where are the male disciples? Yeah, yeah, they're not there, are they? Where, where are they? They're not there at all. John's Gospel tells us John was there for a bit because Jesus tells him to look after his men. But by this point, they've all disappeared. They've all gone. To make things worse, of course, Peter had denied knowing Jesus at all. Deserted him. And it's a total newcomer on the scene, Joseph of Arimathea, who does the very intimate job of taking Jesus down off the cross and laying him in the tomb. Not his closest friends, Joseph of Arimathea on the fringes. And what was the men's reaction to the women's news? How did they react? Uh, they did, but before that, how did they react? Before they went to the tomb? Said they were talking nonsense. Now, don't be too hard on the disciples, really. I don't think it's. I don't think they're downplaying women at this point. Because imagine, you know, and this is not too difficult to imagine for some of you, I know. Imagine your loved one recently died, and your friends come and say, "Oh, we just we just saw your loved one walking down Fontagarry Road." You'd be like, "I don't think so." <laughs> you wouldn't believe them, would you? Because people don't come back from the dead. But of course, Jesus wasn't just anybody. Jesus, God in person. Jesus who had said he was going to die and rise again. So they go to the tomb, as Sai said. But even then, and they see the, the empty tomb, how does he go away in verse 12? Well, in verse, in ver we ran to the tomb. How does he go away from the tomb? What's he doing? Wondering, wondering, he still hasn't quite got there, has he? Even though Jesus had told him. How might it have been different for Peter if he'd remembered Jesus' words? So here's the message for us today on this Easter morning. Jesus is alive. It changes absolutely everything. But if we forget his words and his promises then we're living like it never even happened. And the best we can hope to do is to make pretty a corpse. How will remembering Jesus' promises change the way you live tomorrow, next week, when you're struggling at work, when you're isolating with COVID? Jesus is alive he rose. He conquered death and he conquered hell and he did it for you. So trust in him and know that even when everything seems dark and desperate, he is alive and he is at work. He is with you and he will hold you safe. That is the difference that Jesus makes. The difference that the risen Jesus makes. And we're going to have a way to remember those promises in a moment or two's time. But before that, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to declare our faith. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're sorry when we forget the promises of Jesus, when we forget that he's promised to never leave us or forsake us, when we forget that he's promised to give us life to the full now, and life forever. Oh, forgive us when we forget the promise of the Holy Spirit who can make us strong and kind and self-controlled and all of those other wonderful promises. Oh, forgive us, Father, when we forget. Help us to remember. Help us to remember that Jesus is alive, that he's risen. And help us to remember that when we trust in him, we have that new life too. So come, Holy Spirit, teach this message to our hearts this morning, we pray. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand and declare our faith. Oh, we've got another hymn. Let's do the hymn first. Let's do the hymn. <coughs>
we are let's affirm our faith let's declare our faith in the resurrection of our lord jesus christ christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures he was buried he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles this we have received and this we believe Amen. Amen. I'll do sit down. Now, for our prayers this morning, I've made some <laughs> chunky, chunky bookmarks that have got some wonderful promises of Jesus on them. And on the back, it says, Living Lord, help me to remember. And then it's for you to write the things about Jesus and about life with him that you need to remember over the next year. So I'm going to hand these out, and um, I've got some pens as well. So we're just going to take a few little moments of quiet to, to write that, and then make sure you take your bookmarks home. Put them somewhere where you can see them. If you don't read book books, if you use your Kindle or your phone, then you can pin it up somewhere um, where you're going to see it so that you can always remember the promises of Jesus and not forget. So I'm going to come round with them. I'm going to put a few on each end of each row and you can pass them along.
I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So loving Father, please help us to remember. Help us to remember these wonderful promises. Help us to remember the myriad of promises contained in your word. Help us not to live as if you haven't said those words, but help us to live in the light of all that we have seen and heard from Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. So let's stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We're not allowed to, to hug or anything quite yet. So I haven't updated my risk assessment. But you can wave a, a peace, a friendly peace to one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <coughs> So we're going to uh, sing our next Easter hymn this morning. This is one of uh, Heather's favourites, I know. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Let's sing it strongly and enthusiastically this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
Thank you, Father, for making us and our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you, through Jesus, your Son. And now we give you thanks, because by his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has restored to us eternal life. So with the angels and everyone in heaven, we say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, all of you drink from this cup because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Together we remember that Jesus is always with us and say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, so that with everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us all to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray to the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this tiny bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. And so come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for the, the instructions on how we're going to come to the front to receive bread and then wine, and um, if you follow... Heather and Naomi's example, you'll see what, see what to do. You can't do this without opening this with these glasses. It's funny.
body of Christ. Keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ. Keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, 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 keep you in eternal life. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Father, thank you, Samuel. They will bless him and keep him safe and help him to grow up so and love you always. Amen. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. 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 You can't have any sweet tart, not yet. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Father, thank you for Avril. Pray for your rich blessing upon her this Easter time and always. Amen. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. have a blessing is it Sandra isn't it yeah so Father thank you for Sandra Father pray you'll bless her richly this Easter tide and always
That really is the power of the cross, isn't it? Over death. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen him and yet have believed. We have seen his glory. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Yes, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love. By the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ, continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your spirit, to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, just before our final hymn, if you want to be seated for a moment, we'll have our notices. The big one is, church is at half past ten next week. Just for next week only, church is at half past ten. It's our annual meeting Sunday. There will be Sunday school next door. And we'll have um, Holy Communion with our annual meeting in the middle of that. Um, so, so please come for that. We've got a bring and share lunch. There are st still some items of food that people haven't got their names by on the list at the back. So do please sign up if you can bring something. It's an important moment in our church life as we look back to the past year and look forward to the year that... Uh, uh, that God has got in store for us. So, so that's next week, it's half past ten. Half past ten. And there are no other services anywhere else in our end of the ministry area on that day. We're all together for that service. We've got a lovely cake. We would have had it at Messy Church yesterday, but I think we were victims to the sunshine, so we didn't have as many children as we used to have before COVID. So we've got a lovely He Is Risen cake. So do stay this morning to have a cup of tea or coffee and share some of our, our delicious looking cake there. You're very welcome. The rest of the notices are on the back of your sheet. Make sure you, you read them and take note of what's there. If you're not on my email list, you normally get an email every Friday. If you're not getting that, then let me have your email address and we'll make sure that you get one of those emails. I'm not guaranteeing there'll be one next week because um, I'm on leave for most of it. We do have our service on Wednesday as usual. Apart from that, I'm off next week. So, um, so th there may or may not be an email, but um, let me know if you want to be on that list. Anything else that's urgent to be announced? No? Well, let's stand and sing our final hymn this morning. What else could we sing other than thine be the glory? Let's stand together.
So may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this Easter tide and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, you didn't do it on this? No. Sorry, I didn't put it out where it was. I